One of the things they mentioned yesterday uh, in terms of uh, in that strain of disease, I think yeah. he called it the Zaire strain or something to that effect. Uh, you've talked about how they become, they're, they're non-infectious, but uh, some people, I, 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 I refer to our Twitter handle, they had also mentioned this. I think he was saying that you know, in terms of following protocol, he believes that this is international bed standards that Nigeria has adopted in this particular instance. But he also, we just want to know though, are we, are we also a little stressed for space? Would you have held on to the patient, say, a little longer if you had the luxury of space? We do have the luxury of space. I mean, this is a, this is a, a large uh, you know, isolation unit. Uh, 40 beds. So space is not an issue. You can handle 40 patients. Yes. 40 critical patients. Yes, if, yes, if at you do once. need to. Yeah, exactly. And then apart from that, there's a different isolation unit that was recently constructed by uh, the Lagos State Government. So space is not an issue. You know, and then of course, you know, if at all, God forbid, we do need, you know, beds for patients, you know, uh, I think it was just short, a short while ago. Uh, we we saw what, what UCH is doing, you know, using uh, tents uh, that uh, can also be used to isolate patients. So by no stretch of the imagination is space uh, an issue here. It is an issue of this man has recovered, you know, this man is good to go, and we're using internationally, you know, acclaimed best uh, practices. Okay, like, so to follow up on that, pardon me for butting in, uh, no. uh, Isaac Timani says that uh, the American doctors who contracted EVD are still in quarantine. Don't you think that we're in a hurry to discharge our patients? Again, you see, um, there have to be indicators. There have to be criteria that you use. That is the beauty of science, you know. So these indicators, these criteria don't change from one location to the, to the other. People, scientists have sat down and have decided on what the criteria are. If these uh, American doctors still have viruses in their blood, if their lab tests are still returning positive, of course they will not be discharged. Is it possible that your tests might be, might, there might be an error in your test result? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Again, I, this, this, these are very sophisticated tests that are conducted, and they are conducted, again, in line with global standards. Even as I speak, we have, uh, we have uh, experts from uh, Germany that are supporting the laboratory in uh, Luth to ensure that all the tests uh, absolutely correct. Right from the beginning, all the tests that have been conducted on uh, the patients were double checked, you know, in other labs uh, in Europe and they all turned out exactly the same. So laboratory testing is not a gap in this response. So you'll continue to follow up with the patients to see how they're doing, will you? No, absolutely. Uh, for, for people that have gone through such an ordeal, you know, you have uh, you know, a need to follow up and see how they're doing also, you know, provide them with, uh, you know, psychosocial support, uh, provide them uh, with uh, information that, you know, questions that they might have about, uh, you know, their well-being. It, it okay. but, but tell us, right. it's, it's not like a save the virus immediately clears from your system. It's that you have gone past the stage where you can infect people, right? Is that it is totally cleared. That is what it means. Let it me is totally cleared. From your, yes, it is totally so cleared. So it's from run its blood. cycle and it's out. That's it's out. That's, that's what it means. So, so what happens is, uh, again, once an individual is infected by the virus. It's a battle between his immune system and the virus, mm -hmm. right? So for people that are probably at the extremes of uh, age, maybe the very young, the very old, again, the immune system might not be as strong. But for people that are, you know, young men, you know, young women, people that are uh, young, usually the immune system, and then of course it depends on your, on your, on your history, uh, your, your healthy history in terms of, you know, uh, how well you have been. If your immune system is able to overcome uh, the virus, then it does it. It doesn't wait and say, okay, I'm going to spare one. It clears the virus totally. So what uh, medical treatment actually does, it just provides you with the support that you need. For instance, if you're vomiting, you're passing diarrhea, you know, and you know, you're going to get dehydrated. So what the support system does is prevent you from getting diarrhea so that you stand a better chance of uh, fighting the virus. Okay, the, just side this in here. A.G. Kerman Woodica says, the CDC manual based on Kikrit Congo, it is true that a man can be infectious after recovering for up to two months. That is, that is, I think this is exactly what we're saying. They are not infectious. No, if you discharge a patient, then he is not infectious. Okay? 
I, uh, you know, uh, maybe in another forum, you know, I'm happy to have, you know, detailed discussions around the, the scientific basis of these, uh, you know, assertions. But no, nobody leaves the uh, uh, health facility, is cleared as uh, good, fit enough to go home if he's infectious. That would be irresponsible. And you can imagine that, you know, with this uh, assembly of world experts, nobody would let, let that hope So happen. the World Health could be lying or could have erred in its, one of its reports on the website that states that it remains in the cement for seven months. For seven months, I have never heard of <laughs> the virus being in the, in the cement for seven months. So maybe, maybe he needs to check, check his facts. That's, that, that, that I am not aware of. Okay, because months. I mean, so many people also make a reference to that. You got another Daniel saying the same thing, but uh, well, what, I, I, yes, know, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, clearly the 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 evidence in the literature, you know, that we have come across and we've had a lot of discussions around this, does not state that you know the uh, virus persists in the semen for several months. There have been studies that show that viral particles. Again, that is why I don't want to go into nitty you know, uh, details, because that only b brings confusion. You know, viral particles might be found in the semen, you know, but again, the key thing is we're not the first country in the world that has had this outbreak. You know, we've had outbreaks elsewhere. And do you compare no notes? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, even as we speak, because of the kind of uh, progress that we've made uh, in the Nigeria uh, EOC, the Sierra Leonean, uh, Guinean, and Liberians are thinking about setting up an EOC, you know, modeled after the Nigerian uh, EOC. So we are sharing uh, notes, we are comparing notes, but the evidence there is that there is no, not a single case of an Ebola, Ebola virus disease that has come out of uh, a, a man, you know, uh, you know, transmitting it, transmitting it in, in, his, in his semen. So we have to be very clear in our minds whether this is speculative or whether it's, this is, you know, backed by actual science. And we need to move ahead from that. We should not, you know, sort of obsess about that issue. I think this is a time for us as a nation to, to remain calm, to, to realize that everything is being done by the federal government, by the Lagos state government, and, you know, the global community to ensure that this uh, uh, outbreak does not expand beyond its current status and to recognize, you know, the people that have given their lives, you know, for, uh, you know, in the course of, uh, controlling this outbreak. I guess a lot of people will not who think that government, of course, would definitely be responsible in its actions when it comes to those who have survived the disease. Uh, but they would also they would be curious to know whether or not there will be any do's and don'ts. Let's not forget that we also have medical personnel who will be watching the show and uh, listen to some of the things that will be, you know, dished out. Do they have any do's and don'ts? Those people who have been discharged or the Good to live their lives. They're no longer under observation. They can do, you know, whatever it is they wish to do and, and live their lives to the fullest as members of society. No, absolutely, absolutely. When you are discharged from the hospital, you, that that means you are fit enough, you know, to go back and continue living. But of course, you know, uh, because of the because of the evidence uh, that you may have viral particles in the semen, mm -hmm. uh, virus itself in the semen. Uh, males are generally advised to use, you know, protected, uh, you know, intercourse uh, for about uh, three months. And during that period, again, there's a, you know, an aggressive follow-up of patients that have been discharged, you know. And uh, again, there's psychotherapy to ensure that, you know, they completely uh, go back to their normal lives. Yeah, they issued a certificate. We understand in some countries they are. Certificate, you mean, to patients that have been discharged? Yes. Uh, what, what we do is to issue out the regular, you know, uh, discharge notes. Uh, information around uh, the status of a patient that has been discharged is, is confidential, and I think that is information that that individual patient can decide to share with uh, any uh, authority or any individual, but that is uh, for him, for his privacy. But like I said, he's, he doesn't transmit the virus, so uh, really there's no uh, reason for anybody to present a certificate to any authority to say, oh, I am Ebola free. If you have Ebola virus, the symptoms will be clear, 
you know, the symptoms are, are there. You, it, 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 it's something that we look out for in the, in the airport. So any uh, call for people to present, uh, you know, certificates as being a bona fide is, is really misguided. Real quick, right, Dr. are those patients time, separated? Dr. Sorry, Tim, in the, in, the, in the isolation ward, are they separated? Are the beds separated? From each other, no. or are they just a general? No, no, absolutely, they are, they are separated. Absolutely, okay. it's not about the house. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but Dr. Fraser, don't forget. I mean, if you're comparing notes with Liberia and Sierra Leone, it's got to be through phone. The borders are still closed, I, I believe, so that um, we're all cautious. Mm. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Dr. Fraser Shrabu is the incident manager and head Ebola emergency operations in the country, and that's based in Lagos, actually. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. All right, then we'll be yeah, back pleasure. after this. Join us again. Thank <laughs> you.